Welcome to Mount Eden Missionary Baptist Church, located at 1501 West Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Way, Dayton, Ohio, 45402, Pastor Corey J. Pruitt. Our phone number is 937-222-0867. Our website is mountedenbaptist.org, where you can watch our Sunday morning services and other services on live stream. Like us on Facebook. Our motto is, because we care, we share. On the behalf of Pastor Corey J. Pruitt and the Mount Eden Church family, we say, Psalm 126. Let's read it again. <laughs> Psalm 126. Don't stand. Let's just read it again. Okay? Let's read it. You ready? Yeah. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, it was as if we were dreaming. Watch this. And it says, Then our mouths were filled with what? Laughter and our tongues with joyful songs. Then the nations say, come on, the Lord has done what? Great things. Great things for who? Yeah. For them. Uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the greatest things is, is for people to recognize how good God, come on, Hallelujah. has been to you. I mean, that's an exciting thing, Brother Charles Jackson, when people recognize uh, how good God has been to you. The nation says God was good to them, and uh, watch this, he's also, come on, done spectacular things for us. We are overjoyed. That's what it said. It says, we, come on, are overjoyed. Why is it we now? It's because we are recipients, come on, of the joy of the Lord. We are, come on, uh, direct participants uh, in that that God has freed his people. Does that make sense? Then it goes on and says, it says that, that restore our fortunes. O oh Lord, as you restore streams to dry river beds in the Negev. Watch this. It says in verse 5, those who cry while they plan. Those of us who have to go through tough times while trying to build programs at Mount Eden Missionary Baptist Church. He says, even though you cry in the beginning, he says, at the end of the day, you're going to have some joy and you'll be able to sing. Yes. Yes. All right, God. All right. You'll be able to sing when it comes time for the harvest to come up. Amen. Don't miss this today because somebody here is in a place right now where you're crying. But I promise you there's a time coming. The person who goes out weeping, carrying his bag of seed, will come home singing, carrying his bundles of grain. Now, there are a lot of things you can see in that text. There are a lot of things that you need to observe because you can't just take seed out one day and come back tomorrow. There's a time, there's a process, come on, by which this happiness comes. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And again, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes, if you please, about the attitude of the redeemed, the attitude of those who've been freed. And I want to introduce... To you an instance where a man has been confined for many years and all of a sudden his time of, of departure is at hand. The man has been in solitary confinement for a while. He has communicated with others who like he has been imprisoned. However, his time of departure is at hand. Can you imagine the filth of a cell without the protection of raid and the possibility of fresh sanitary refreshments needed in order to have the simplest of pleasure? Maybe, maybe the story, maybe the story of this man will, will, will have you in the mindset of what it meant to the children of Israel as they were confined, as they were bound together in a place that uh, they could not call home. It was said that it could have possibly been when they were caught or rather taken to Babylonian captivity 
Uh, and in this place, if you will, as they were held as prisoners, uh, treated as, uh, uh, as animals. Come on, somebody help me here. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a place of confinement. It's a place where uh, there's no freedom. Uh, maybe the story of this leper, if you please, uh, who has been an outcast of society, living in poverty, associating with only lepers. Uh, watch this. A foul disease, uh, slowly, slowly eating his life away. <coughs> This man hears of Jesus and dares to come, if you please, ignoring the warnings of his friends that he will and could be stoned if he wasn't careful. He braves the crowd, crying, if you will, unclean, unclean, but eventually, because of his persistence, he finds himself in the face of Jesus. Are you with me here? And, and Jesus heard uh, his predicament, heard his situation. Uh, and look at what happens, if you please. Uh, Jesus grabs the man's hand. Grabs his hand and now he is made whole. And one thing about it is, uh, it is, it is nobody had touched him in a long time. Are you with me here? With no reserve, he approaches Jesus. He is in the greatest of danger of his life. And, and, and listen, the crowd melts. Uh, he has become before Jesus. And he shouts unclean. Jesus takes him by the hand. Uh, and nobody had done it uh, in a while. And watch this. Uh, some of you uh, who are in this room right now uh, are mean and hateful. Come on, talk to me. Some of you are so mean and so hateful that you won't even touch somebody next to you. And I've got news for you. You may be sitting by a leper. You may be sitting by somebody who hadn't been touched in a while. You may be sitting by somebody who needed a word or a smile that would possibly change their lives. Are you with me here? Yeah. He said it didn't happen in a while. Have you ever been in a place of confinement where the enemy had you? Listen, uh, you were free to go outside, uh, but because you were depressed uh, and because you were uh, over, uh, bad down, uh, uh, bogged down with trouble uh, and trial, uh, and you were in your own mess, somebody help me here, and you were in a bad place in your own mind? And you needed somebody to tell you that it's going to be okay. Every now and then you have to realize and recognize that there are people who come to the house of worship, watch this, they come because they feel like somebody in here may give me a word. Somebody may shake my hand that had not shook it in a while. Maybe somebody has a, a word of encouragement. Are you with me here? Have you ever been in a place of confinement where nobody would help you? In a place of confinement where you needed money and nobody could loan it to you. In a place of confinement where your money was funny, your change was strange, and your credit would not get it. Here he is. That touch changed his life forever because he is healed. He's relieved. He's freed. He's refreshed. And he's revived. Now I submit that this is a story that helps to shed light on the testimony of many of us who are saved today. This view of one who has escaped a city of destruction with a great load on his back asking the question, where can I go? How can I escape? That's why people come to church. They don't come to church to compete to see who has the best hat. People, people don't come, I say everybody don't come for that reason, are you with me here? Uh, everybody does not come to the house of the Lord to be a part of the, the, the fashion show. Somebody is coming, uh, declaring, uh, what am I going to do next? Somebody came in saying, how do I get out of here? Are you with me here? They are plagued by drugs and alcohol and all types of problems in their lives. They're trying to figure out how are they going to get to their next dimension. But they landed by somebody who has the audacity to come into the house of God who has received the grace of God and fails to share that same grace. If you sit by somebody now who hadn't spoke to you, get up right now politely. Uh, don't lift your finger, just get up from where you are and move someplace else. 
If they didn't have the decency to simply say good morning, they didn't have to say praise the Lord. They did not have to speak in tongues. They didn't have to touch their neighbor. But at least if they didn't speak to you this morning. Are you listening to me? Somebody came in this room right now saying, how can I get rid, how can I rid myself of this burden that I'm carrying? I submit to you today that when one has been saved, he ought to be able to show a man the way to the cross. I said, when, 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 when you've been saved, you ought to be able to direct somebody to the cross. You may not know all the words to say, but listen up, you ought to know the direction to point. You may not know all of the scriptures to give. Are you with me here? But you ought to know the way. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You ought to know the way to show them uh, that I went over there at this certain time. Uh, and they met me where I was. Uh, they didn't dog me out. They didn't call me everything but a child of God. They simply gave me what I needed. Uh, and when I left, I had a weight off of me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When is the church going to return mm. to become the church? Come on, dog. We're too busy trying to, 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 to put people's business out in the streets. We're busy talking about what a person is. But I got news for you. All of us is something or was. Was an is. Y'all ain't saying Tell a neighbor I was an is, but thank God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Thank God I ain't what I was. Y'all ain't saying it. And at some point, you ought to have the ability to tell people. Well, that God changed my life. I'm not what I want to be. I'm not what I'm going to be. But oh, you better thank God I ain't what I used to be. Can you help me tell somebody I ain't what I used to be? Come on, tell somebody if you don't mind. Tell them I'm not what I used to be. I'm not too big to tell you that I had some trials and tribulations. I ain't too big that I told some lies. I ain't too big to tell you that I got a liquor bottle in my tree. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. There ain't anybody here that will tell somebody, hey, I ain't what I used to be. And at some point, you ought, to, you ought to have something about yourself that tells folk, listen, I'm glad I ain't what I was. But I'm telling you, it would have been a fight in here a long time ago. When you're saved, you ought, to be, you ought to be willing to tell somebody. That's what the text is saying. That when you're saved, you ought to be able to show somebody to the cross. You ought to be able to tell somebody, go this way. Turn right. Y'all ain't saying here. Turn left and turn the other corner. Are you with me here? Then tell them, now listen, I ain't have to put on a certain uh, type of suit. I didn't have to have on a certain color. Come on. I came just like I was. And I left like I needed to leave. All right. All right, Come on, tell, tell, tell somebody, I, I came as I was. His word is true. Just, just come as you are. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you. Is there anybody here that has determined that God's word is true? One thing about the true evangelist, the, the true de evangelist says that sometimes despondent, sometimes despair, sometimes mired and foul, if you will, by the swamp. And this is when you tell your story as to how you made it out of the storm. This is when you tell people how you made it out of the sickness. This is when you tell people how you made it out of the snares. This is when you tell people how you made it out of the shame. Are you going to help me here? And this is when you tell people, watch this. Uh, when I got to the cross, everything that I had tied to me, y'all going to help me here, had to cut me loose because of what happened down uh, over on a hill. Call. Is there anybody other than me that's happy about what took place out there on that hill called Calvary? Because everything that happened after that time, God covered it and I thank God that I'm covered today because of what he did out on the hill called Calvary and you ought to tell somebody I am what I am because of Christ if you don't mind just shake a neighbor's hand and tell a neighbor I am what God says I am I'm not going to die in the shape I'm in I'm going to go to greater places I'm going to do some greater things but it's all 
Sometimes you're in some bad places. But if you're going to evangelize, you can't feed people a phony story. You have to tell people sometimes I'm up. And sometimes I'm down. Sometimes almost leveled to the ground. And that's when you pick up the old song of the lyricists who penned it and declared trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Lay awake at night, but oh, that's all right. Why? Because Jesus, if there ain't anybody here that knows he'll fix it, hey, shake somebody's hand and tell them, neighbor, he'll fix it if you let him. Tell somebody, he'll fix it if you let him fix it. He'll turn it around if you let him turn it around. He'll heal your body if you let him heal you. He'll give you joy if you give it all your hands. Ain't anybody here to help me? All because of Calvary. I can shout and give God glory. All because of Calvary. I can come in here with my head lifted up. Not worried about what folks think about me. All because of Calvary. I can walk around and give God glory. Thank you for joining us for yet another broadcast here at the Mount Enon Missionary Baptist Church, Dayton, Ohio. We want to welcome you to get this message in its entirety. A seed of $3 for the MP3. $6 for our CDs and $10 for our DVDs. And trust me today, the services and messages at the Mount Eden Church are life-changing. And please come back next week to view our broadcast. If you'd like to get these products, why don't you call 937-222-0867. And then if perhaps you don't want to call, get on our website at www.mountedenbaptist.org. And I promise we'll get this product out to you right away. Thank you so much for joining and please return.